Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Gad here. In this little series, I'm going to be showing you how you can make this third person character controller. And you can see we can run in all the directions and walk in all the directions and stuff. So this first episode is just going to be about having a character walk around, which we're just going to use a capsule for, have gravity, and then also have the camera working. The second episode is going to be about blend trees, so we can get the animations working. And then the third episode, we're going to tie everything together by writing our own finite state machines for like walking states and running states which is something that's really useful to learn if you don't know how to do it already because it makes it a lot easier to maintain and add to your code so without further ado let's just get into this a quick side note as well after I've finished recording this video I forgot to mention this we can add a Cinemachine Collider onto the virtual camera um, if you don't know what this is don't worry I'll explain it later on but we can collide against, we set the layers we want to collide against so when I play this and I back up against the wall, you can see that it's going to bring the camera forward so we can't clip through the wall. Alright, so now we're in the new scene. First thing we're going to do is just add a terrain. So under 3D objects and terrain. Set the position to minus 500 on the X and minus 500 on the Z. Just so it's centered. And then we're going to add in a capsule for the player. You can add in your own player now, but I'm just doing this and I'm going to go on to the character in the next episode. So what I'm going to do here is just add a character controller component. Set the skin width to zero. And then the center and the radius and the height is already perfect for this capsule. So you might want to change it if you've got your own one. And then, so what I'm going to do now is add a component. And this is just going to be the movement state manager. And like I said in the beginning of this episode, this is going to be on the third episode, but we're just starting it now. But we don't actually, this has nothing to do with states at the moment. This is going to be simple movement and some gravity. Alright, so now in the script we're going to need a few variables. And then the first one is going to be a public float for the move speed. And I'm just going to set this to 3. And then also we're going to need some inputs. So we're going to have a float for the horizontal input. And then also for the vertical input. And then I'm going to have a hide an inspector public vector 3. And then this is just because of the states. We're going to need this direction in the other states. So it needs to be public. And then let's just call this direction. Well, dir. And then finally we just need the character controller. Call this controller. And then get it in the start by going controller equals get component. And it's going to be the character controller. So now I'm just going to make a new function down at the bottom and call this get direction and move. There we go. And then so in here, first of all, we're just going to get the inputs. So if we go horizontal input equals input dot get axis and the name is horizontal. I'm going to duplicate this by pressing control D and then change this one to vertical. And then also change this to the vertical input here. And so to get the direction, we're just going to equal to the transform.forward times the vertical input. And then add the transform.right. And then times that by the horizontal input. So this way we're always moving relative to the way we're facing. And finally we can move it by just going controller.move in the direction times this by the move speed and then times this by time dot delta time so it's frame rate independent now in the update we can just type in get direction and move now if we play this we'll be able to walk around so as you can see this is working nicely we can move in all directions so next we need some gravity because if we lift up the player and we play it you can see he's just floating around. This is quite easy to add in. Alright, to add the gravity, what we need is a few more variables. The first one is going to be a float for the ground Y offset. Because we're going to have a sphere cast. And then we need to be able to determine how far up or down it goes. And then we're going to make this a serialized field. So we can set in the inspector. And then next, what we need to have also is a serialized field for a layer mask 
and this is going to be called the ground mask and then we also need a vector 3 and this is going to be the sphere position so now we can do a ground check to see if the player is on the ground or not so we know when to add gravity so we can make a function that returns a ball and then call this is grounded and then in here what we need to do first is set the sphere position so the sphere position is going to equal to the new vector 3 which is going to be the transform.position.x and then I'm just going to copy this paste it make it the y and then paste it again for the z but we want to have the ground y offset so we're going to minus the ground y offset in there and then to do the check all we need to do is if physics.checksphere from the sphere position and the radius is going to be the controller dot radius and we're going to minus 0 0.05 and this is just so it doesn't stick out the player at all and we can't stand next to a wall and it thinks we're grounded and then you'll be able to just keep on jumping up the wall obviously we don't want that and then the ground mask and if this returns true we are going to <laughs> we're going to return true and then else we're just going to return false so now we can actually add the gravity so make a new function here called gravity and then we need a few more variables for this so the first one is going to be a serialized field this will be a float for gravity which is going to equal minus 9.81 because this is the acceleration of gravity on earth in meters per second squared the next thing we're going to need is a vector 3 for the velocity and I think that's it we'll find out <laughs> so what we need to check is if we're not is grounded what we want to do is have the velocity dot y to plus equal gravity and times this by time dot delta time and then else if the velocity dot y is less than zero which means we've been falling we want to reset it so we go velocity dot y equals minus two and this is just so when we hit the ground it gives an extra four still just so we're always touching the ground it's nice and snug and doesn't float when it's meant to be on the ground and now we can add the gravity by just going controller dot move by the velocity and then times it by time dot delta time once again just so it's squared like I said it's meters per second squared for gravity and then under the update under the get direction we're just going to call the gravity function and now there's a few things to set this up first is the ground y offset we need to know where the sphere should be so it makes sense for us to be able to see the sphere so what we need to do there is just type in void on draw gizmos and then set the color to gizmos.color equals color color dot red and then we're going to go gizmos.draw wire sphere and then we're just going to copy this check sphere up until the 0 0.05 paste that in close that off so now we can check as you can see we'll get some errors in the console that's because the sphere position doesn't get set until the update and then on draw gizmos gets run in the edit mode so if we go in here we can see the sphere in the middle of the capsule so i'm just going to set this to 0 0.6 just because i know that's going to work and you can see the sphere is going under the ground a little bit but at the moment this isn't going to work still you can see it falling really fast this isn't this is because we haven't set the ground mask so i'm just going to set this to 0 0.6 again and then I already have a ground layer so you want to go on the terrain add a layer type in ground go back on the terrain and set the layer to ground go on the capsule and set the ground mask to the ground so now when we press play you can see it's falling nice and slow we pick it up and it's still falling at a nice speed all right so you can change this if you want it to fall a bit faster because it does seem quite slow when it's normal but now we can go ahead and add in the camera 
So to do that, we're just going to right click on the player and then set a camera follow position, which I'm going to move up and right a little bit just so the player is not blocking the view. And then so now we need Cinema Machine, and to get that, you just go on Window, Package Manager, make sure you're on the Unity registry, scroll down to Cinema Machine and hit Install. And when it's done, you'll get this menu pop up. We click on here and we want to create a virtual camera. So what we want to do here is get the camera follow position to be the follow and the look at. And then we want to change this body to third person follow and its aim to do nothing. And I'm going to set the shoulder offset to zero because we've already got the offset and set the damping all to zero as well. So now to get it to actually rotate the player and the camera, it's actually really simple. We just need to go on the capsule or your player, add a new script, which I'm going to call the aim state manager. Because after the third episode, if anyone wants me to do more in depth with aiming and shooting and stuff, we'll be using this aim state manager. So I'll create an ad, open it up in Visual Studio. And then we're just going to need three variables in here. The first being after we add the using cinema machine. It's going to be a public cinema machine dot axis state. And then we're going to call this the X input or the X axis. And then also we want to have one for the Y axis. So if you don't know what this is, this is basically the cinema machines like kind of input and well input handlers type of thing. So in the update, we need to update this by going X axis dot update. And then in here, we just want time dot delta time, just so every frame it gets updated. And the same for the Y. And then finally, in the late update, what we want to do is get the, oh, we need a reference to the camera follow position as well. So serialize field, transform, cam follow, pause. In the late update, get the cam follow pause dot local Eula angles equal to, and I'm just going to copy this to save me some time later, a new vector 3, and then this is going to be the um, x axis dot, actually, no, this is going to be the y axis dot value. And I'll show you why we're doing this later on. And then, so after this, we're going to have the cam follow position dot local Euler angles dot y and then finally the same but for the z and then next to rotate the player we just need to do the transform dot Euler angles equal this to a new vector 3 which is going to be the transform dot Euler angles dot x and in this we're going to have the x axis dot value and then finally the transform dot Euler angles dot z so now this should all be working, but we need to fill in some things in the axis states. So here's the max speed, which I'm going to set to 300, which is like the sensitivity. The input axis name for the X axis, we want mouse X with a capital X and the same for the mouse Y. We just want mouse Y. And here the minimum value, we want minus 180 and 180 and we want it to wrap just so we can go the whole way around. And in the Y axis, what we want is to have um, invert input and have about like minus 60 and 60. And then we just set the camera follow position at the bottom there. So what this does is when we move the value, we get a value in these axes, and this is just going straight into the rotations. So you can see, we can look up and down, it gets clamped to the minus 60 and the 60 and we can spin around the whole way and if I move my mouse while I'm walking forward you can see that it just moves the way we're facing. So that's it for this video. If you want to see more and learn about some blend trees and state machines that will be the next two episodes. If you enjoyed this video it would be nice if you could give it a like and leave a comment if you want me to do more in depth ones after about shooting and like damage and things like that to other players. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.